Hey everybody, EE Dude here. So I want to give you guys an overview of a project I got going on right now. Basically the whole idea is that we uh, wirelessly power this drone right here. So it's just a drone from Amazon that you can get for like $25 and we do some modifications to it, um, including adding a receiver coil and some electronics so that it could be powered wirelessly through this uh, transmitting coil board that we designed. So the idea is that we deliver enough power to it so it can kind of like hover in place. That's the ultimate goal of this project. So I've made the complete schematics and PCB files available in the Hackaday link below in the description. Um, it leads you to my Hackaday profile and I have all the information on this build along with kind of like an update blog on that site. So you can go check that out after you watch the video. And also please subscribe. Um, this is kind of like an ongoing project. So there's gonna be kind of ongoing videos on this build, um, improvements to it that we're gonna make along the way. The focus of this video is mainly an overview of kind of the critical components of the system, and we're going to show some initial tests that we did, um, so initial hardware tests in a lab showing the drone operating. We're not going to go into a, kind of like the nitty gritty details of how this system works uh, from a power electronics perspective. For more information on that, you could check out the IEEE transactions paper uh, that we kind of based this build on, and that link I'm going to put in the description below so you can check that out as well. The donor drone for this project is a Hubson X4, and it can be bought on Amazon for about $20 to $25. So the drone itself, it just comes with a battery, a controller, and some manuals. We can see the modified drone on the left, which has an additional propeller guard installed on it. Basically, this propeller guard functions as a mount for the single turn receiver coil that we attach to it. And you can see the single turn receiver coil kind of following the outline of the propeller guard. The green PCB that's taped on the drone, um, it's the receiver board we designed for the drone. It contains the receiver's resonant capacitors and a Texas Instruments-based uh, voltage regulator IC. The only power the drone has to operate from is what it can receive through the voltage regulator on the receiver board, which basically processes the induced current of the receiver coil attached to the propeller guard. Now the 13.5 uh, megahertz operating frequency, it's like an ISM band frequency. It allows us to use uh, nano Henry level inductors. So basically very small uh, inductance inductors. So an added benefit of this high frequency operation is that the single turn allows us to have an overall lightweight system, which can easily, easily be carried by the drone, um, especially since the battery is no longer needed. Um, so you have kind of a weight reduction, overall weight reduction there. The transmitter electronics consist of a class EF inverter connected to a two-term planar inductor embedded within a PCB, so it's like a, a planar PCB inductor. So the transmitter board is designed such that the drone can easily take off and land from it, um, so the form factor overall uh, allows you know the drone to kind of sit on it and the, uh, the dimensions of the drone match well closely within the dimensions of the transmitter coil, as you can see. During operation, uh, this embedded coil acts as a pathway for high frequency current, which then induces a high frequency magnetic field above this coil. This uh, magnetic field causes the receiver coil of the drone to kind of have an induced current within it, uh, which is what powers the, the drone itself. So the Class CF inverter is comprised of a single GAN systems gallium nitride enhancement mode transistor. Um, so a GAN device was chosen mainly because um, it, it can operate efficiently at these high frequencies if properly implemented. Uh, the transmitter side resonance circuit along with the gate driver circuit circuitry is also located on the board. Uh, the jumper pins are for the inverter input bus voltage and auxiliary power input. So this is actually the board used during the tests um, that we'll show later in the video. The transistor actually failed during one of the tests and we'll go over that failure. And that's kind of what explains the burn marks located around the transistor. So here's one of the first lab tests we conducted. From the start, we, uh, we were concerned about the transistor's rapid heating and you could see us monitoring the temperature with a, a flare thermal camera over there in the corner. As the input voltage to the inverter has increased, you can see the drone receives power as indicated by the flashing of the LEDs on it. Uh, we then proceeded to link up the controller to the drone and then further increase the input voltage. We attempted to take off, however, 
uh, since the voltage is still below the designed operating voltage of the inverter, we're unable to deliver enough power for the drone to become airborne. We continue to increase the voltage and attempt to take off again with no success, unfortunately. So it should be noted that even if we were able to take off, we did not implement a closed uh, loop feedback system uh, to, to kind of boost the, the transmitter current as the drone takes off to maintain the magnetic field and thus maintain a constant barrel delivery once the air gap increases. That was kind of not the goal of this first step of this project. For now, we, we just wanted to test our ability to deliver enough power for the drone to take off. So the heating of the transistor, it, it just ends up being too rapid to allow for further increases in bus voltage, which would allow for a higher power delivery even with the presence of a cooling fan. Um, we still uh, were not able to, to increase the voltage without making the device fail. Basically, the device failed because of overheating. Uh, this was mainly due to our initial poor design of the inverter board. Uh, the GAN system's transistor that we use is actually a bottom side cool device and we mistakenly installed heat sinks on top of the device, kind of in a, like a vain attempt to cool it. The result of this poor design was the burning of the transistor, which is significant since they're about 15 bucks a pop. So our new version of the board uh, shown here contains thermal vias below and to the side of the device, which allow for the heat to kind of dissipate um, to an exposed copper bottom, which will allow for proper heat dissipation to a heat sink that we can attach via some thermal grease. Um, it's our hope that this will allow us to operate at the rate of power and allow the drone to receive enough power to become airborne. So we have this board ordered, we're waiting on it to be delivered, and as soon as it's delivered, we'll solder on the new components and do another test and, and give you guys an update on this project. And hopefully we'll have um, a, a victory and not just like a sputtering <laughs> uh, takeoff of the drone. We have drones everywhere these days. Uh, whether we like them or not with their cameras. Um, but there isn't much work done in kind of trying to get them power wirelessly. And we have a lot of wireless chargers for like cell phones, for our smart watches, and drones kind of seem like the next logical step in that. So in our next update, hopefully we'll have the board. Um, and the updated board will arrive and we can assemble it and do another test and increase the bus voltage and output power of the inverter and maybe get some uh, hovering with the drone going on. So, so if you don't want to miss out, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is EE e. Dude and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, link up baby, link up. Take off. Alright, that's good enough. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>